Welcome everybody. In this video we're going to go over how to make a histogram in Excel 2010. And the example histogram that we're going to make is going to be made by rolling two six-sided dice. And rather than doing that by hand, we're going to get Excel to do the rolling for us. So we're going to do a computer simulation of rolling two six-sided dice and make a histogram of the resulting data. Now if you've taken a course in probability or statistics, you might be able to predict what that histogram will look like. But otherwise, we'll just get Excel to do the computer simulation for us, and we'll discover what that histogram actually does look like. So here's an Excel 2010 spreadsheet that I've prepared before. It has basically these, this is just text, these are headings. I've entered a table heading here for recording uh, information rolled by the dice and another table for recording information about the histogram which is information about stuff in this table. So let's just quickly go through the column headings that I've got here. Column A has turn in it, that's just where we're going to keep track of how many times we've rolled the dice. Column B is where we're going to record the numbers rolled on the first dice Column C, where we record the numbers rolled on the second dice. And column D is where we're going to record the sum of those two numbers. In the histogram table, we're going to have a place to record uh, all the possible values for the sum on the two dice. And I'm going to start with one that's not actually possible, which is 1. And then, so I hit typed 1 and hit enter, and then I'm going to type in 2. And now what I want to do is actually get Excel to count for me. So if I left click and then drag, I've highlighted these two things. And our normal cursor here that I'm wiggling is the open cross. Now if I move it slowly over to the corner here, the bottom right hand corner, you'll notice there's a little blob there. If I put this on top of it, it changes from an open cross to a closed cross. And then if I left click and drag, I can get Excel to count for me. And I want to go down to 13 because 12 is actually the highest number you can roll on two six-sided dice. And we'll just go to 13 just to be safe. And then the frequency table here in column G is going to have, frequency is going to be like how many times we rolled our lucky number 7. Okay, so how do we get Excel to do all that for us? Well, in turn we just want to count, so I'm going to start with 1. And roll 1 is where we need to get Excel to roll our random number for a six-sided die. And to do that, I'm going to hover here over the insert function and then left click. And that opens this input window. And what you can do is type in something that's related to what you're looking for. And I'm going to type in random die. And you'll see that Excel comes up with a bunch of functions. And it turns out this first one, ran between, is the one that we want. And you should check what it says down here to make sure that it actually matches what you want. So I'm going to click OK. And now we get a function arguments window. And the function arguments window has two parameters. And down here it tells you what the parameters are. Bottom is the smallest number. So on a six-sided die, that's one. And top is the largest number. And that's going to be 6, because we're using a regular 6-sided die. So if I click OK, Excel's going to input the uh, function into the spreadsheet and evaluate it. So when I do that, the cell that we were working on now has a number, a random number, 5. And if I click in a blank cell and hit Delete, it re-rolls the dice, die, and I got a 3. Roll it again, 4, got another 4, 3, five, one, you get the idea. Okay, so in this cell I want to have my second die, and I, basically I want to use the same formula. So if I click on here, again I can go to the bottom right hand corner, get that closed cross, left click drag, and it'll copy the formula for me. And if I click on here, you'll see it's exactly the same formula that we had before. Okay, and for some, what I want to do first is just remind you about how Excel refers to cells. So this cell here, we need to add up 1 and 2. This cell here is the cell for our first roll 1, and it's in cell B3. And our second one is in cell C3. 
Okay, so we need to put in a formula, and it has to start with an equals for Excel to calculate it. So we'll type in equals, and then to get the this first roll number, we need to left click in here, and Excel automatically inputs the address for that cell, which is B3, and then I can type in plus, and then left click on roll two, and I get a C3, which is the address for that cell. Now if I left click here in the function bar, you'll notice that it highlights these things, blue for B3, which matches the blue box here, and C3 is in green, which matches the green box around cell C3. Now if I hit enter, Excel evaluates that function, and you'll notice it re-rolled the two dice, and we get 2 and 5, and it added up to 7 which is pretty cool. And if I hit delete, Excel re-rolls the dice and the sum is updated to go with the new rolls. 5 and 2 is 7, 3 and 4 is 7, apparently 7 seems to be pretty easy to get, 3 and 3 is 6. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to roll the dice a second time here and to do that I'm going to get Excel to count and I'm going to do it in a way that will copy well. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to type in equals and I want this number to be one more than the previous row. So I'm going to click on the cell above and then type in plus one. And now we have Excel. We've made it count and we've used a formula for it. And you'll see why um, in a little while. So underneath here we want to basically have the same thing that we have in each of these three things. So I can left click and you want to start in the middle of the cell and then left click drag across and again we want to copy it down one row so get that closed cross and move it down and now we want to check what Excel actually did so here we have the same function ran between for the two dice and our sum if you click here in the function bar you'll see that it's adding up the two numbers next to it so it's adding up the numbers rolled in this row of the spreadsheet which is exactly what we wanted and the reason why Excel's doing that is that if you click here you'll see it's doing the addition to the cells relative to it and the default way that it does this copy is it keeps the relative arrangement, the relative pattern the same which is exactly what we want. Okay, so now what we want to do is left click and highlight this whole row because we want to copy it lots of times and you can copy it down just like this and we get a whole bunch more and you'll notice say here in row 4 that our relative addressing is still working, it's still adding up what we wanted. And also here you'll notice that we're adding 1 to 3 to get the number for this fourth roll. Now what we could do is highlight this and drag down. I want to do 6,000, so we could do this and drag down to 6,000, but that's kind of a pain, it takes a long time. So what I want to do is show you a quicker way of doing it. And what we're going to do is use the copy function, and for copy, you can either click here, or as it shows you, you can hit Control c That highlights this row. And now I'm going to put where we want to copy it to, and I'm going to start here. And to make this work, you need to press down Shift, and hold down Shift until basically we're done. So holding down Shift, I'm going to hit the right arrow, and go across. And now what I'm going to do, still holding down Shift, is I'm going to do Page Down. And as you can see, the numbers on the left here are getting bigger and bigger as I'm holding down page down. And we want to go down to get 6,000 rolls of the dice. So here we go. We're nearly there. Oh, we went way too far. I don't know why that happens. Nearly always seem to get too many. So we want to go. Here we go. We're near 6,000. So I'm going to hit Enter, the Enter key, and that inserts all these um, rows. So now we have more than 6,000 rows, so I'm just going to trim off the extra ones. We want to go down to exactly 6,000. And you'll notice that 6,000 is in row 6,002. And let's just check that this worked the way we wanted it to. Here we have the random die generation, another one. And here we've got our sum. And you'll notice that our relative addressing is still working correctly. So that's pretty cool. So we now have a, a, a spreadsheet where Excel is calculating 6,000 rolls of two dice. And if I click and click delete in a blank cell, you'll see that all of those are updated. So now we have uh, our dice roll table complete and we need to make our histogram table. So to do that, you need to find the data analysis tool pack, 
which is under the data tab so let's click on data and normally if it's already installed you'll find it over here and it is by default um, in some versions of Excel but I've deleted it just to show you how to find it so the way to find it is to click on the file tab and then you might think you want to click on add-ins but we actually want options so click on options and then click on add-ins and here's our analysis tool pack and you might think that you hit OK I did the first time that I did this but it doesn't work what you need to do is manage the Excel add-ins which is down here and then click go which gives us this nice table uh, window and if you click on analysis tool pack and hit OK it'll install it and in these in my biophysics materials we also use the solver add-in so I'm going to click on that as well and install it and click OK so Excel installs it and you'll notice it put two extra things up here the one we want is data analysis so if I click on that I get this selector tool and we want histogram so I'm going to click OK and now I have this histogram window with, which has lots of things for us to input and I'm going to go through how to do this in a way there are a couple of gotchas in this and you have to be careful how you do it input range is the values that we want to use to make our um, histogram so that's this column D with the rolls of the die so I'm going to click on the selector tool you have to do that if you just click over here things don't work as well as you might think so click on the selector tool and highlight these things now you might want to drag down all the way down to 6,000 that works just fine but what I'm going to do is I'm only going to highlight the first few and show you a quicker way we can hit backspace and then type in our number that we remembered 6002 for the end of that table and then click on the selector tool again and that inputs the numbers here bin range is the place where we're going to record how many times we got each of the numbers so the bins in this case they're kind of buckets where we store our numbers are the numbers that we actually want to record so that's going to be over here in our histogram table those numbers so if I click on the selector tool highlight 1 through 13 hit the selector tool again it inserted a reference to those as well now I want to have the um, output range I would like it to be on the same spreadsheet so I'm going to click output range and then I have to click a selector tool to put where I want to put it and I'm going to put it here separated from my histogram table so that we've got my histogram table and then here's going to be Excel's histogram table click the selector tool again and then down here we have some other choices which we don't want at this point we just want a regular histogram but we do want chart output so I'm going to select here for chart output and if I did everything properly when I click OK we should get a new histogram table and a chart yay it worked doesn't always work but here we go so I'm going to just make this a little bigger by going to the bottom right hand corner hold down shift and I can make it bigger but keep the same shape so let's just check that our histogram graph um, is working correctly the bins those are the buckets that we were counting things you'll notice that there are no um, recordings of ones and no recordings of 13s but we do get numbers for each of the possible ones from 2 through 12 so that's good and the frequency here is telling you how many times we rolled each one of those and you'll notice that our lucky number 7 we actually rolled it 996 times you can see it when you hover over it which is about a thousand so that's looking good too but this histogram is kind of an interesting shape it's a triangle right we have a triangular shape goes up that way and down that way so maybe that was just a fluke and if I hit delete in a blank cell these numbers over here are being updated but unfortunately the Excel histogram function is not being updated and it would be really nice if we could do that so in the next video we'll go over how to do that but for now I'll, I'll finish this video and um, I'll post this spreadsheet on um, my website which just to remind you is at circle4.com slash biophysics and if you want to find this video and the spreadsheet that we were just working on look for the videos link at the top of the page